We are committed to recapturing the flag of the conservative movement and providing a forum to figure out what comes next. Men cannot improve a society by setting fire to it. They must seek out the old virtues and bring them back into the light. The American conservative was first. On all the major issues, they were part of the 2016 election. I have the honor tonight of handing out two awards before we get to our keynote address. And the first of which is our Conservative Mind Award. We're big fans of Russell Kirk at the American Conservative. So when we devised our award for young leaders, it was a no-brainer to name it for Kirk's seminal work, The Conservative Mind, which he published at just age 35. Now, if there's anyone who's accomplished more at, than that at a young age, it's definitely our award winner tonight. Rachel Bovard is the Senior Director of Policy at the Conservative Partnership Institute. She is the co-author of Conservative, Knowing What to Keep with former Senator Jim DeMint. Prior to her current position, she served as Director of Policy Services at the Heritage Foundation. And before that was a senior staffer in the United States Senate and the House of Representatives. In 2013, she was named to National Journal's list of the 25 most influential women in Washington under 35. She is a member of the board of directors here at the American Conservative, but perhaps most importantly, she's also an accomplished sommelier. So come to her with all of your, your wine questions. Rachel has had a, an extraordinarily distinguished career in Washington for her young age. I can say that she's been a, a, a extraordinary uh, guidance and counsel to me as we look to build the American Conservative. Now, I will say that there's one thing that I'm a, a slightly disappointed about. Uh, Rachel posted on Twitter that she was very excited to receive this major award, but we do not have a, a, a leg lamp for her tonight. <laughs> we just have a, a crystal obelisk. So um, with that, please join me in welcoming Rachel Bovard. Uh, well, thank you, uh, Emil, and thank you, everybody, uh, for being here this evening, and thank you especially to my coworkers at the Conservative Partnership Institute over here every day. I couldn't do anything I do without them. <laughs> um, and also my husband, Lawrence, who is equally, if not more so, more important. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> we are about to celebrate our one year anniversary, so thank you, yeah. <laughs> Um, so as some of you know, uh, Senator Jim DeMitt and I uh, wrote a book a couple of years ago, and while we were on this media tour, you know, Senator DeMitt being so gracious as he is would always introduce me to people, and the one superlative that he would always come back to when he introduced me, he would say, this is Rachel, and she made this list of the 25 most influential women in Washington under 35, and it was what he led with all the time. But I noticed that when I actually turned 35, he very seamlessly and artfully started introducing me as making a list of influential women under 40. So, <laughs> so I am first and foremost very grateful that I now have an award that Jim DeMint can reference without referencing my age. That's very, very important to me. <laughs> um, yes, thank you. <laughs> um, but I am so grateful uh, to the American conservative and for the American conservative uh, in this moment um, TAC, as many of you know, has always been fearless in its conviction to principle and its commitment to debate and argument and pulling together disparate sides of the conservative movement to engage one another. And that's especially needed right now. The conservative movement's in a period of intellectual dynamism. I have to say, more than any other time at, during my stay here in Washington, the movement's on fire right now, and I think it's really exciting to be a part of it. Um, but as I wrote in a symposium for the American Conservative last year, the conservative movement has had a lot of answers to the problems of the 20th century. But we are still struggling, I think, as a movement to provide meaningful and coherent answers to the challenges of the 21st century. 
to the issue, for instance, of low-wage immigration, of foreign wars, the rise of globalism and its attendant perils, to the growing threat of China, to the state of the American family, to, send, to, to, to a topic that I spend a lot of my time writing about, which is the centralization of private power and the tyranny that can be unleashed from the corporate sector. These are problems that desperately need solutions, but they must be conservative solutions. And rather than shy away from that debate, rather than uncritically and relentlessly repeat phrases that honestly seem somehow to have evolved into an ideology that has ossified into dogma, the right should embrace the fray. And more than that, be anxious for it. Because only there, grounded in our principles and with the humility to reflect carefully and pragmatically on our policies, can we attend to one of my favorite exhortations that Russell Kirk ever gave us. Men cannot improve a society by setting fire to it, he said. They must seek out the old virtues and bring them back into the light. Thank you very much.